عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تحرموا الطيبات ما أحل الله لكم ولا تعتدوا إن الله لا يحب المعتدين وكلوا مما رزقكم الله حلالا طيبا واتقوا الله الذي أنتم به مؤمنون صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين يا أيها الذين آمنوا those people who have brought faith لا تحرموا طيبات ما أحل الله لكم do not make unlawful or haram those pleasant things that Allah has made halal for you ولا تعتدوا and do not transgress or go beyond the boundaries إن الله لا يحب المعتدين Definitely, verily, Allah does not like those people who transgress or go beyond the boundaries of Allah. وَكُلُوا مِمَّا رَزَقَكُمُ اللَّهُ حَلَالًا طَيِّبًا And eat from what Allah has provided for you, حَلَالًا طَيِّبًا Halal and طَيِّب Halal which is uh, permissible, lawful and طَيِّب Good, pleasant. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي أَنْتُمْ بِهِ تُؤْمِنُونَ And fear Allah if you, in whom you believe. So this ayah relates to, uh, some of us have said that in um, the previous uh, subject that was being said, one thing that was said was that um, among the enemies or among the non-Muslims, you would find Nasara or the Christians to be closer in um, friendship towards Muslims, the Christians. And the reason given was, ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ بِأَنَّ مِنْهُمْ قِسِّيسِينَ وَرُهْبَانَ وَأَنَّهُ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ They have ulama, they have um, people who have rahbaniyat which are rahib people who are who have given up this world and وَأَنَّهُ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ and do not have arrogance they do not have a lot of arrogance so this was uh, the three features of Nasara that were said that has caused them to be better or less worse than other <coughs> enemies of Islam or Kuffar so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is returning and this is the general uh, discussion of the Surah Surah Al-Ma'idah <coughs> that rulings are given so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is coming back and giving the direction about how severe it is in the eyes of Allah, how serious it is if somebody calls something haram which is made halal by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for example, in terms of eating as well, in terms of other relationships, for example, marital relationships. The problem with these Rahbani people, Rahib people was that they would have given up the world and they would have uh, also they would not ever marry which is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made permissible and has uh, considered. The Prophet sallallahu has told us that it is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so something preferable for a Muslim to do. So, somebody might have thought that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising Rahbaniyat, then this is something that is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not that. In totality, in the complete picture, Rahbaniyat is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes and it is not permissible. It is in fact not permissible. One of the reasons that it keeps the Christians in control is one feature of Rahbaniyat that they do not, that the Rahib people, they have given up the world, but that does not mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really likes Rahbaniyat. Achha. So, Ya Ayyuhu Alladheena Amanu, those people who have brought faith, La tuharrimu tayyibati ma ahallallahu lakum, do not make haram those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made halal for you. So, there's three things that ulama have written, that there, there may be three ways of considering something haram. One is, or to give it, give it up. One is, in a matter of aqeedah, in a matter of belief, you some consider something that is haram. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made eggs and meat and uh, poultry halal. If it is done, processed according to the sharia way. If somebody in a way of aqeedah considers it haram or impermissible that Allah has not allowed it or this is something that is impermissible, then they are a kafir. Then they are a kafir because they have gone against a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of aqeedah. It's just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made five times salah mandatory. If somebody says that five times salah is not mandatory, then they are pushed out of the fold of Islam. So that is one way. The second way is that somebody does it <coughs> not in a matter of aqeedah, but with their words, with their words. That such and such thing is harmful or such and such thing I will never, they make, they take an oath, they swear that I will never touch such and such thing. They do not consider it as aqeedah, but they make it for own, their own self that I will not do such and such thing all my life. I, I take a swear. So if something is made halal by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and somebody says that I have made it haram upon you, I swear to Allah by Allah or swear by anything 
that I will make this haram, this is haram for me now, then such a qasam, such an oath, and there will be detail about uh, qasam and the types of oath in the next, and the kafara for it, if somebody breaks their oath, then what is the repercussion, how do they make up for that, what is the compensation. But if somebody makes a qasam, a verbal qasam, a verbal oath that I am making such, a, such thing haram for myself, then it is necessary for them to break that qasam, to break that qasam and to uh, compensate for it by kafara, by way of kafara, the detail of which will come. The third way is that somebody practically by action always stays away from something. For example, I have through experience learned that chili is something that my stomach cannot take. So, no matter how hard somebody how you know tells me how 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 uh, you know how tempting it might be, I will always stay away from chili all my life. For example then that is something that is permissible. I do not consider it a part of aqeedah. I do not, I have not taken a sworn, I have not sworn by Allah or made a qasam upon this. But this is something that I do out of, as this is my practice. And because I know that there is harm for me in that. This is the, this is that kind of prohibition or staying away from something which is permissible by Allah subhanahu wa But I cannot consider it a thing of sawab for me, a thing of reward for me. Because if I consider it a thing of reward for me, then this is the definition of Rahbaniyat. To give up something that Allah has not forbidden, but you give it up by practice and consider it a thing of reward or taqwa from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we do that, then that becomes a bid'at and Rahbaniyat, which is despised upon and for such a person, if they have that kind of uh, that kind of expectation that I will get reward upon doing this, then it is necessary for them to do against it in their practice. But if they do not have any expectation of reward, it is just something a matter of practice because they have learned from experience. This is the example of the mujahidat, some halal things that Sufia or Mashaykh advise people to give up. This is, they come under that as well. They do not consider it a part of aqidah. They do not make you take a qasam or swear upon it. And only because they consider it harmful for your soul, certain halal things, they advise you to give those up. For example, <clears throat> an example would be that to go in a company of people who are, uh, who do not care too much about their deen. Huh? So a sheikh might advise their murid or their students to stay away from the company of such people. Although if you think about it technically, speaking in technical terms, if people are not expressly doing something against deen and only their mind and their thought is so that they do not care too much about their deen, then on a strictly technical basis it is permissible to sit with them. But a sheikh might tell their murid to stay away from those people. So this is because he has known from experience that the company of such people puts a bad effect in, in the long term over the mind. So he is telling he is telling you to stay away in practice from such people, but no swearing is involved, no aqidah is involved in this, and uh, we do not expect a reward from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in that, right? We do not consider it a thing of uh, thing of reward. If somebody considers it a thing of reward and taqwa, and it's a, it might be helpful for things of reward, it might be helpful for taqwa, but it is not itself taqwa or it is not itself uh, a thing that you can expect reward from for. So then it becomes permissible. In Allah la yuhibbul mu'tadeen, if you do the in the impermissible ways of giving things up or making them haram for you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love it. The Christians used to think that giving up this world totally, not marrying, not uh, not you know sleeping at night, those kind not living in people, uh, not communicating or socializing with people, that was a thing of reward and taqwa. It is not a thing of reward and taqwa, it is adi. It adi. It is going beyond the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like that. Wa kulu mimma razaqukum Allahu halalan tayyiba. Taqwa indeed is that what Allah has allowed for you, you eat it, you partake from it, and you give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is taqwa. Wa taqwa Allah alladhi antum bihi mu'minun. And fear Allah. And in that, what we have to understand is that obey the command of Allah. Obey the command of Allah. If you believe in Allah, then obey the command of Allah, that whatever is the command of Allah. You may like it, it may be a pleasurable thing, it may be a something that is difficult for you to do, but the key, the core is that you obey what, you, what you're told to do. Do not come up with things on your own. Do not go in the direction of, uh, you know, overboard, going in the, in the direction of extreme, doing a lot or doing too little, just do as you are told. Uh, the restriction is there should be halal and tayyib. It should be something that is permissible from for you for, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين ربنا تقبل منا أنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا أنك أنت التواب الرحيم صلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين آمين برحمة الله الرحمن الرحيم إن شاء الله 